EA Sports. It's opening week in the NFL, and today we have two teams who are more than ready to get the season underway. It's the Texans going up against the Chiefs. The opening kick of the new season is straight ahead as we turn it over to our broadcast duo of Brandon Gaiden and Charles Davis. Larry, as always, it is a frenzied atmosphere inside Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Today, it's the opener of a new NFL season between the Houston Texans and the Kansas City Chiefs. the first carry here for Jamal Charles. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And as we peer at this offense now, let's look at Jamal Charles, a guy who continues to be so productive in this league. No matter where he touches it on the field, there's a very good chance he can go the distance. Back to throw here. Try to fight his tight end, Kelsey, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Andre Hatton. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. the interception. Here's Osweiler. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. Offensive starters here. Wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins, a talented, talented wide receiver. And he's still looking for that ultimate recognition. He wants to be mentioned with the best receivers in the game. His numbers suggest that we should do so. Again on second and ten now, it's Osweiler. The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. And he's brought down. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the play or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident, and then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Here we go now. On the snip, and he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. Brock Osweiler taking it in. And the Texans have taken the early lead. And they wasted no time right down near the goal line, and they just sneak it in. Just do what you need to do. Big guys going up front. Have the field general, the leader, just falling behind him. And the Texans take a 7-0 lead. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. The Chiefs offense now making their way back onto the field. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. Hey, 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 hey. Here we go. They go back to the air here after the INT. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. 
The defensive crew for the Texans. Here's a look. Whitney Merciless is rapidly becoming one of the top outside linebackers in the game. As well he should. With that name, he's got to be great. And on second and ten now. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. No surprise there, Jadevian Clowney with a tackle for loss. We all know how he became one of the most famous players in football, though, don't we remember? Oh, that one play. Yeah, that one big-time play. It was on highlights everywhere. They want to see more of that here in the NFL. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. Now they'll get 10 there, but it leaves him just short for fourth down. Obviously, they didn't get everything they wanted on that completion, but they put themselves in a spot where you've got to at least think about going for it. I know where we are on the field, but still, you've got to think about it, don't you? So certainly an interesting call there to go for it. And the Texans take over an excellent field position. And here comes the Texans now. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. And incomplete there, almost picked off. That's one you maybe expect your roaming free safety to come up with. But it's second down. And it's possible that today the most important group could be the linebackers. Yeah, the second level, as we like to call them, right? Defensive front has to control things, but the linebackers, they do more than clean up. They help create big plays. Second and ten, it's Osweiler again. And the catch made here by Sharon Peak. They'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. A little surprise here on third and one. Osweiler, well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback who has to slide and find open space to throw. Red zone Detroit, opportunity. Now a handoff as they run left side. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. And he is going to lose yardage here. He lost two there, and it's third down. And frankly, Brandon, we're talking about things I'm not sure we ever thought we'd talk about in the NFL, and a lot of that is the speed at the linebacker position. A lot of these guys in college, they were safeties. They moved them up to outside linebacker to combat the spread offenses, and now we're seeing it in the NFL, those same guys using their speed to make plays in the backfield, similar to that one. So third and seven and an extra defensive back on the field here. Definitely want to play coverage here. Now a first carry for Lamar Miller. And he is going to lose yardage here. A loss of a yard and it brings up four. Ah, yes, that's today's NFL defensive tackle. Not just a space eater anymore. A guy with agility, movement skills, who can rush the passer and make plays in the offensive backfield. And Crosby puts it through. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So it's a seven-play drive, but it stalls out in the end. Let's credit the defensive front seven. They were a little leaky at the start of the drive, but they stiffened toward the end. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. And the Chiefs now getting set to go. And on that last drive, Whitford on fourth turned it over. A good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down, when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily 
The coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. A great read, and it's picked off. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. A good convergence there defensively. Only a yard and it's second down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. And he'll go out of bounds down inside the 15-yard line. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. They lost four there, and it's third down. So the myth has been shattered. Every cornerback in the league is not just a cover corner. Some of them will stick their nose in there and make plays exactly as we just saw there. A big loss suffered by the offense after that nice tackle. So a ways to go here on third and 10. They'll come out in the pistol. On third down, Osweiler. He rifles one that's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And he'll take it all the way up near the 30-yard line. And now here comes Kansas City. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. See what happens. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Screen pass to Charles. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. And that was a beautifully executed screen pass. They let the rushers get upfield and get the escorts in front, meaning the offensive linemen, other blockers out in front, completed the pass beautifully. So now you've got all that open space with big guys leading the way. A first down carry here for Charles. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. On second down, Jamal Charles. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and they're going to face a third down. Well, there they went blitz defensively, Charles, and things were paved well coming from the linebacker position. I love the way that you described it, paved well. Oftentimes, the guy who gets home on the blitz, he's going to get all the credit. But his teammates did all the dirty work, right? They ran into people on purpose. They sometimes tugged on jerseys to hold linemen to create space and gaps. And that play finished off really, really well. Well-conceived, well-designed, and even better executed. So on fourth down, on comes the left-footed punter, Kevin Huber, to punt it away. Oh, it's a wobbler here. And a fair catch called for and made at the 12-yard line. They're not good at all. Punt of just 24 yards there. And the Texans are going to have the football with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. Handoff 
off as they run the counter play. And he'll take this one only up to about his 13-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's Texans football as we get going in quarter number two. They've got a second and nine to start things out. Nine yards still remaining here to pick up the first on second down. It's a five-receiver set, three to the left, two to the right. Now Osweiler on second down. Right side caught Fedorowicz. Evades the tackler and now some space. The 30, past the 20. Touchdown, Houston. C.J. Fedorowicz taking it in. And the Texans will add on to their lead. When they drew that up, I don't think they envisioned it ending in a house call, but he got it and took it all the way home. Really impressive run after the catch, wasn't it? That was, a, that was really special by him. But let's face it, in today's NFL, those tight ends are often former wide receivers or maybe even sometimes bigger running backs. They just put them in a position to get a great matchup and make plays like that. So now here are the Chiefs as their offense makes their way back out onto the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Quick hitter here. It's complete. 12 yards on the pickup. And that'll be good for a KC first down. Offense comes to the line now. First and 10. And some changes here as the D-line separates some. Now a play fake here on first down. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Bust like that at just about every position. And sometimes if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. On play action, they'll throw toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. Back to throw again. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. It'll be a gain of 16 and give him a first down as well. Looked like the screen pass was taken away there, and that was a nice job of improvising, but it's not normal. Usually when the screen pass is taken away, you're talking just throw the ball at the ground at the feet of the receiver so that you don't get it intercepted and just start over. But he ended up finding another receiver. So here we go, first and 10 now. They'll look to throw again. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked off by Andre Howell. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back on the field here. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. We'll I see, love it. We'll see if they dial it up this drive. Right, now, Second down, down following the run. From midfield now, here's Osweiler. He's going to go for a big play downfield. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. Touchdown, Houston. DeAndre Hopkins. 
Texans will extend their lead. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. That was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. And now here comes Kansas City. And with three interceptions thrown already, we'll see. Do they, do they rely more on the ground game here? They may have to change things offensively to try and settle things down, not just for the guy throwing the ball, but for the rest of the offensive unit because his confidence has to be shaken a little bit. And you just wonder, is the backup going to start to warm up a little bit over on the sideline? Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. 20 yards on the pickup there. Good enough for a Kansas City first down. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end, take some easier completions. Yeah, interception last drive there. He hits the reliable target. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Caught, Kelsey, left side. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. When you execute a drag or a crossing around really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Second and five. Single, single, slot, slot. Hey, you're running out of Kelsey out in the slot right. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. The tight end, Kelsey, has it over the middle. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it now with his height setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away, but the bottom line is that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. A great read, and it's picked off. And the return will stop right around the 25. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good, so they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense, and they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Again, we'll see the pistol here. A give to the brother of J.J. This is Derek Watt. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Now, how about that call? Hand it to the big guy in that situation. Normally, you think of him as a real short yardage runner. But in this case, they trust him to get a few more yards than that. I remember an old New York Giants quarterback, a Super Bowl winning quarterback, telling me he loves offense coordinators who call the plays with a little bit of abandon. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Play action. It's Osweiler going up top. And that's caught at the 25. They give him a gain of 37. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big-time play right there. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. A 
Another pistol look here. On second down, they'll try to run the counter. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Back-to-back -back runs that were stacked up. Offensively, now you've got to think to yourself, do we change blocking assignment? And he fires one that's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. That's sort of a second quarter to forget for him. Now two picks in this frame. Almost as if the first one that he threw, he couldn't shake, couldn't get it out of his head. He ends up throwing a second one as a result. Compounds the mistake a little bit. Yeah, you got to be able to forget, compartmentalize, whatever you want to call it, and move on. He hasn't been able to do so here in the second. Game clock at 2.01. Time for one final play before the two-minute warning. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Screen pass to Charles. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. So a minute 56 to play in this first half. We're back to Arrowhead after this. Second down now after the pass completion. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. It's Kelsey on the ground. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. They'll look to throw again. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Jadevian Clowney in there for a milestone sack as it moves in past Hall of Famer Lawrence Taylor, who finished his career with 132 and a half. The defensive line disperses a little bit here, maybe expecting a pass. Back to throw. And he's got it. Touchdown, Chiefs. Their dangerous wide receiver. A 16-yard touchdown. And the Chiefs are able to draw a bit closer. Yeah, yeah, you heard it, right? <laughs> exhale the exhale. And I'm taking that from their bench because finally, Right before the half, they find a way to get the ball in the end zone and get, get some points on the board. Maybe they can use that to kickstart them for the second half. Yeah, just to get something before going into the lockers. And now in the second half, they can just tighten. That's what they want to do, tighten down everything they're doing, and it maybe explode at the right time. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. And two interceptions already here in this first half. That's got to affect him a little bit, right? He's got to be thinking about it. He's got to be thinking about it, but most of the good ones, they find a way to put it aside. They're not happy about it by any stretch of the imagination. They find a way to put it aside and continue to play their game. Can he put it aside? Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Fresh set of downs here. And no press coverage here. They are backing off in the secondary. Throwing now, Osweiler on first down. Caught left side, Hopkins. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. DeAndre Hopkins as the first half is winding down. And the Texans will add on to their lead. Heard a coach talk about those late in the half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. And now here 
comes Kansas City. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Charles the low set down. They go play action here on first down. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. They got pressure there and only rushing three. And there's a defensive coordinator right now who is celebrating not just getting home with three there, but realizing if that's the type of pressure he can get in the entire game, then his pass defense is going to be excellent. You're dropping eight. Where are you going to go with the football? So second and ten here. So the D-line's going to spread out. Kelsey out in the slot right. Here we go now. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And that will be incomplete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. So a second down incompletion now brings up third down. gun they'll look to throw and now here is another interception a great read and it's picked off and his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half and now out comes Houston and from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it and I think in this situation that's the proper play but we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out on the grab over the middle. And he's in for the touchdown on the final play of the first half. The prayer is answered. How did they get that done? And they extend their lead, a little added cushion into the lockers. What a way to finish. Tremendous way. That's momentum that they carry in with them. Can they convert it and bring it back out to start? Yeah, that's perfect. Two, Davis, deep. Uh, hey, I gotta go. I gotta go. Okay, and sorry about that. Didn't know Larry got cut off early. We are back and ready for the third quarter. That's fielded in the end zone. And now out comes Houston. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. And now here's a carry heading left. Takes this one across the 35 to the 36, a gain of about four. A sea of Chiefs jerseys in there that time to make the stop. You know how we get focused at end of the half and end of the game situations about how much time's on the board and, you know, what you need to do? Sometimes you don't even have to worry about that. That's just smart football. You know, that kind of a lead, staying in bounds, it burns clock, even in a situation that we're not really focused on it. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two. Now third down. Yeah, let me pump out my chest a little bit. Even though I'm not rooting for either team, that was a really nice defensive play. It's awfully fun to watch, even in an offensive game. And a cutback, right sideline. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. And that's a good sign right there as we start the third quarter because in the first half, not much space to run the football. And as we go into the half, we often think to ourselves, all right, what's the adjustment? What do they have to do? You know what a lot of the adjustments are? No adjustments. You know the game plan, been working on it all week. Maybe a little tweak here or there, a little bit better blocking, and now you're establishing the running game. And the offense lining up first and 10. First and ten, it's Osweiler. 
Backing up. And he's taken down. A Chiefs sack. Dontari Poe. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Second down, Osweiler. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. And let's discuss Osweiler a little bit further. Obviously, an interesting journey for him to get here to Houston. Groomed in Denver and actually got to play some before he ended up making his departure to Houston. But after the Broncos won the Super Bowl, I think he was in search of his own team and his own destiny as maybe a Super Bowl quarterback. They gave him a great opportunity. And he took advantage of it and headed to be a Texan. And here comes play number six on this drive. Go on, go on. Go on, go on. Now let's go. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. They're going to hurry back to the line now. On second down, here's Osweiler. Deep drop, and he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot, but they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. They dial up the corner blitz that time, and it delivers to the tune of a nine-yard loss. The Texans send the punter out. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. This is fielded at the seven. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And it's Chiefs football, first and 10. So here's the Chiefs offense ready for their first reps in half number two. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> They come out here in the eye. All right, here we go. Oh, no, no, no. Following the penalty, here's Charles. Trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. No gain on the play there. Second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. to throw now on first down. Screen pass to Charles. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. They'll get four there out of the screen and it's second down. In order for a screen pass to break big, a lot of things have to come together and be well executed. But all it takes is one small thing to go wrong and keep it from being a big game. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Now a handoff as they run left side. Oh, a heck of a move. Man. And he'll go down. 
about inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. They'll set up a throw. To the right side, it's Kelsey. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. It's a gain of seven, and it'll bring up a second down. Looked like the screen pass was taken away there, but what a nice job improvising, finding other options, and completing the pass anyway. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be taken down at the 34. They got two of the three they needed there. It leaves them with third and just a yard. The best defensive lineman, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Short yardage situation, here's Charles. And he is gonna lose yardage here. He lost two and it brings up Ford. We've become so accustomed to it, you, you sort of take it for granted. You really do, but he is so good that every team in his division, every year, is trying to make sure they draft people charged with trying to block J.J. Watt. So far, hasn't been too successful. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's got Rome. And he's got it across midfield and down to about the 47-yard line. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Here's Osweiler, and his throw's going to be incomplete. Will Fuller was the intended target, and it's third and short. It's a tried-and-true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball, and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. And an extra DB here for the Chiefs on third down. Pass situation. Here's Osweiler to throw, and he will find his man on the outside. It's a gain of just a couple there, but it's enough to get him the first. And they're going to speed things up here. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. We're back now in KC. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. And some changes here as the D-line separates some. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Now Osweiler on second down. It's complete to Fuller. And able to get this down inside the 15 to either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. And the D looking like they may blitz. Now Osweiler on first down. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Really nice play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball, but for the guys on the offensive line, they're doing a nice job of trying to protect their passer. But when a guy hops in the air and goes airborne to try and knock one away, it's difficult because you can't reach out and grab him. That'll be a holding penalty. So all you're trying
you're trying to do is make some type of a play on him, make some type of contact to try and get his arms out of the sky. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and that'll bring up a third and one. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little. And he's in for the score. Touchdown, Texans. Lamar Miller, his first touchdown as a Houston Texan. And the Texans add on. And now we've hit that stage of the game, partner, where one of our predecessors, one of the great commentators of all time, he used to sing in this situation when this game appeared to be over. <laughs> I know the fat lady's been singing for some no, time. No, 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 not her at all. This but one of our guys. she's singing too. Oh, she's singing. She, yeah, she's at least, on like the fifth tune. At yeah, this point. She, she left scales way behind. But he used to sing something about turning out the lights. The party was over. And out come the Chiefs now. The last time out, they had that long 50 plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay. Do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Now back to throw. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A big play there on the screen pass. 39 yards. What really hurts defenses on screen passes is that they eat up one of their levels right away. Because you know most defenses three levels, D-line, linebacker, secondary. But on a screen pass, you're inviting the defensive line to get past them. Then you throw the ball over their heads, and now there's just two levels left to try and stop big guys out in front of a guy running with the football. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? Uh, That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackle to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. And he's got his man on the out route. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Travis Kelsey, the Pro Bowl tight end, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. Just looking at it from a defensive perspective, when you break the huddle in the red zone, Tight end is one of the guys you've got a key on because quarterbacks want the ball of their hands fast in this position, and they want to get it to someone. And in this case, he had the play. They just didn't complete it. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And he drops it incomplete, and their struggles continue here. And there was a good opportunity that just went awry. That now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. They'll look to throw on third and goal. Buying time to his left. And my goodness, another interception. Oh, he's got a little daylight. He's at the 40, the 20. And they will score a pick six for the Texans TD. Charles, we've seen them target one of their main weapons time and time again. Maybe they went to that well too many times there. Yeah, and it's so difficult to determine how many times is too many because how many times have we seen a team go and play and say, until they stop us, we'll keep going. Well, they got stopped on that one, and it cost them six points. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. And now here comes Kansas City. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. 
but they can't afford to just bunker in now. All right, they, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage a little bit. They just have to be better with the football on this possession. So last night didn't bother you too much last night. No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position and not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play, too. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. That catch good for five. It's third down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Time running out here on the play clock. Out of the gun now on third down. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Oh, man. For him to be that wide open and drop it, sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And, yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. He'll send this one into the Midwestern air, and it's a good one. And this works out well as it'll kick out of bounds at the 11-yard line. And now out comes Houston. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a beat on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit with play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. He's going to wind up and air it out. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. I guess they figure with a guy who is that hot downfield, who knows how to get the ball into the end zone, you throw it up and give him every opportunity, even though that one fell incomplete. Yeah, he's already been in the end zone multiple times, tried to target him again deep there, but unsuccessful. They go play action with Osweiler. He's gonna go up top again, and the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Well, they went for the big play there, but that drop, could really hurt their momentum. Offense trying to avoid stalling out, facing a third and ten. They come out here in the eye. On third down, Osweiler. A little track jump, and incomplete. The contact made the ball roll free and brings up fourth down. So many offenses want to include their running backs into their passing offense and be able to swing the ball out or check it down to them. But sometimes those guys are just not as comfortable catching the ball as they are running it. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. Fielded at the 33. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here's the Kansas City offense now as they get set to take over. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense. Get a couple of first downs. And, hope it... and he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. They'll look to throw here. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And they'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down. Time for a break. 
Back to finish it off on EA Sports after this. Third down, he'll drop to throw. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. The veteran Jeremy Macklin was the intended target, and that'll bring up a fourth down. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. 47 yards on the punt that time, just one yard on the return. And possession will switch here as this offense will come on deep in their own territory. And they're definitely showing blitz here. And to give this time to the tailback. Now the ball comes loose, but I think a Texan player was able to get his hands on it, and they will indeed hold on to the ball and the possession. A near turnover, but the offense recovers it. Now they'll try to regroup on second. They'll run it with a fullback, Prosh. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down and about the length of the football. This is Prosh, the fullback. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. The Texans send the punter out as he's on to kick it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This is fielded at the 27. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And there'll be time for maybe one final play before we hit triple zeros. The defensive line disperses a little bit here, maybe expecting a pass. One final shot. They'll look to throw. The tight end, Kelsey, has it over the middle. And partner, this first week, this first game that we get to call together, so special every year week one you had the fly over the big american flag out there before the game all the hoopla just having football back so special it is an opening day opening game there's just nothing like it because you really build to a crescendo but the best part for us is that crescendo lasts for a while opening game here an entire season we get into the playoffs to the super bowl i was really excited i could barely sleep last night